Okay, let's get started. It's turtle time again. Happy turtle time. Happy turtle time, everyone. This is going to come out on a day in which you do not expect it to happen, right? <laughs> We're just freewheeling it these days. Yeah. Well, so what's happening is that sometimes when you and I are together, we think Summer House is so beautiful and powerful that maybe it's worth talking about it on a separate day. A little quickie. Yeah, a little quick. Yeah, this is not going to be like full deep dive three hour. This is like down and dirty, stinker minute. <laughs> With Amy and I, where we just get into Summer House, which I thought was an amazing episode. And since we're here together, I mean, let's just talk about it. Yeah. Uh, we were just saying that uh, it is a blessed Good Friday, but we've been having a great Friday. Yeah. Normally, people just have a Good Friday. But this one <laughs> in particular, I, I mean, one of the best Fridays I've ever had in my life. Really. I mean, this is up there. A true TGIF. TGIF. And the reason why we're saying that is because if you're watching YouTube, you're probably like, what the hell is going on? Why is Riley wearing a robe? <laughs> why is there a bunch of beautiful perfumes and stuff that looks like it's from Provence? Right? Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> oh, yeah. The south of France, baby. We got, right before we started recording, at Ken and Lisa's shed, which everyone who's a Turtle Time listener knows that we record some days at Ken and Lisa's beautiful Villa Rosa shed. Ken, we heard a knock at the door. I go, Ken, please let us record. It's just going to be a 45 minute episode. He wasn't pissed like normal. <laughs> he had a gigantic box. How big was his box? Huge, like arm to arm. Ar Ken, imagine Ken's arms out wide. Imagine his Ken, wingspan. <laughs> imagine Ken's wingspan where he's coming to give you a huge bear hug. He's like, you've done a great job. I love you like one of my children. Imagine Ken gives you that kind of hug on Good Friday. He's like, I don't know what he'd be hugging you for. But he had, in his outstretched, hug-ready arms, a box that's the size of him. In a beautiful, sort of like lavender, purple color. Very yes. Lisa, very uh, Villa Rosa. Yeah, so we opened it, and Amy and I are so in the Vanderpump Villa tank right now, because <laughs> what was inside is a bunch of beautiful Villa Rosa, what is it, Vanderpump, what do you call it's it? curated by Lisa to represent the wares and the offerings of the beautiful south of France, where she has her, what is it called? Villa? Chateau. It's, it, there's <laughs> there's it's, a paper. There's a paper that explains it, but it's basically like she wanted, well, Ken and her wanted Amy and I to feel like we are in the south of France at a beautiful villa being pampered as if we are at Chateau Rosa Belle. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. It's like a little, does Belle, Belle means like little, doesn't it? Or girl? Good question. Uh, uh, anyway, it's like <laughs> Villa Rosa, Rosa Bell. Like she got to name this beautiful <laughs> South of France. You can't see this probably on YouTube. No one can see it listening to us, but I wish we could auditorily tell you <laughs> how beautiful this Vanderpump Villa box is that we received. I mean, it was, it's serving pure luxury. I was truly shaken to my core. We had no idea what was going to be inside. It has diptyque, um, room spray, um, soap, lotion. It has a parachute robe, which Riley is wearing right now. Um, beautiful, a bundle of lavender. Did you say sleep mask? A sleep mask, like a silk sleep mask, macaroons. I I'll just say this. I feel like I just got to Chateau Rosabella <laughs> and they said, Riley and Amy, I'm going to take you to your room that you're, you know, that you guys are staying in. Here's the stuff that comes with the room. <laughs> Right? Don't you feel We're like we're in we the just... lap of luxury? <laughs> and we, Amy and I don't get good things often. No. You and I are sort of unlucky, <laughs> horrible stuff happens to us. So the <laughs> fact that when we opened this, I thought it was going to be like, I didn't know what it was going to be. I we, thought Ken yeah. got his beef jerky and water <laughs> and Slim like Jim. Slim Jim. And I thought he was just like, here, I think you guys, I don't want you to sue me if you die in the shed because it's like the air conditioning's not working. So here's like a bunch of shit for survival skills. Yeah. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> Chateau Rosabella. I, it's like, you should see it on YouTube. I think this is the one time I would say switch over to YouTube just to, to like get you there and just see the stuff that we're talking about. I feel so pampered. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. So, oh, and then this goes without saying, obviously you know this, but uh, Amy and I are fully bought. If anybody gives us anything, you know we will never have a harsh critique of you ever in our lives. So we got bought 
Big Time by Vanderpump Villa. And we are, we're we're going to talk about it every single week. And I would say probably <laughs> flattering light, right? I can't wait to see uh, if these contestants can hack it as the newest member of her enterprise. Will they adhere to Vander, Vanderpump's <laughs> very high standards? I don't know. And I can't wait to find out. I love Lisa. I love Hulu. I love Disney. I love Bob Iger. I go all the way to the top. Me too. Bob, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> You knew we liked you before. You've been very good to Turtle Time. I know we're kind of, I, I don't know. I mean, you love us, but this was like, thank you, Bob. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. This is uh, uh, on a different podcast. I heard apparently Josh Gad was going to the mat for Bob Iger on um, social media. He was like, he runs Disney with true love and care. Thank you, Bob Iger, for giving us so many Disney treats. Well, God bless you. Well, you know who else is <laughs> going to be very similar to Josh Gad? I, I'd say pulling a gad. Thank you, Bob Iger. I actually did read a couple chapters of his book, The Ride oh. of a Lifetime. Oh, wow. It talks about him by... Oh. Is that about Disney rides? Is that the double entendre? He's, he, Totally. It's very <laughs> theme park uh, centric or whatever, a pun on theme parks, but actually Bob Iger's incisive insight into managerial shit. He bought Pixar, he bought Star Wars, and it talks about the meetings he did to get those wonderful properties. I mean, I, I'm sure if he would do another book, part two, he would talk about getting Vanderpump Villa <laughs> totally. as part of the Hulu uh, yeah. umbrella. If you played like Disney uh, brand Monopoly, I feel like Pixar... And Star Wars would be the blue, like boardwalk properties. Yeah, you're right. And when, Vanderpump Villa too. <laughs> I think Vanderpump Villa. I, here's what I'm saying: Monopoly board. She's past boardwalk, and there's a pink square or this kind of beautiful <laughs> yeah. lavender that says Chateau <laughs> Rosabelle. Wait, Lisa Vanderpump. Vanderpump Rules Monopoly <gasps> is not a bad idea. Let's make it. Like, sir. <gasps> Yeah, At the, Sir Alley is is the early stages. Yeah. I mean, no offense to them. Yeah, Villa Rosa is obviously Boardwalk Empire, and then Chateau Rosabella is a step in the even yes. past. And then all of the little things are a bottle of rosé, the little characters, yeah. bottle of rosé. Um, something about her, a little sandwich. Something about her sandwich, worm with a mustache. Maybe if they wanted to include something mean that uh, yeah, what, James said, jail. Jail Just is Jackson Jail. Ja Jackson Jail, <laughs> and he's holding a, cu a tin cup where he said that he got quarters to go do his jail phone call you yes. remember Wait. you're with jackson jail and he's telling you a long story about uh his his dmv records <laughs> right i love this um actually during covid i made a custom torrance monopoly where um we used a label maker i'm from torrance california oh, uh, we put local um like restaurants and bars and landmarks we labeled them that's um, so fun it was very fun was the one, one i know um tony's <laughs> Yeah, that was Is that on Torrance? There. Well, it's technically Redondo Beach, but I think we it. might have put it on there anyways. Good. Because I like Tony's. Love. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, well, so Vanderpump Villa, I mean, you got us. I mean, it's... <laughs> April it's... 1st, Mondays at whatever time. And Amy already said this, which is good. Uh, this isn't an April Fool's joke. <laughs> Go on YouTube. <laughs> Do you see a box of Vanderpump Villa right next to me? This is not an April Fool's joke. You, when you go to Hulu, Vanderpump Villa will be there. For every single Monday until this season ends, yeah. right? And we are, I mean, this thing is going to be good, right? <laughs> Mondays just got hotter. Mondays just got hotter, just like Lisa likes. And thank you. I want to say Ken Todd, especially for lugging that big box <laughs> over to us in the shed. We had absolutely no idea what you were going to give us. And this was like 10 out of 10. I'm thrilled. All right. Well, do you think we should move to talking about something else that's just as hot, hot, hot? Um this may be possibly the episode of Summer House that we watched. Let's do it. Um, yeah, I'm jealous. I didn't even realize that there was an after show. This is the first time they've ever done a Summer House after show, yes. I think. Um, so I didn't see it. So uh, as we go through, if there's any relevant uh, information that came out of that, please share because I'm dying to know. Yeah, but I want to promote it too. Like, then they didn't even buy me. I mean, <laughs> Summer House After Show, that would be good to get a big box of stuff. You know, oh, yeah. But Summer House After Show is actually awesome. I love the after shows now. They feel like it's just the people talking with their new hindsight about all of the shit that they were mad at. And it's just fun and breezy. And they talked about like the Carl and Lindsay dynamic. Like, Kyle was so pissed talking about. Lindsay and what she had done to Carl and it was it's very good and I think they're realizing the power of Summer House finally yeah and they're like this 
season deserves a show so yeah. it's season one episode one of the after show they just like started it in the middle of the season to capitalize yeah. on the carl and Lindsay dynamic i feel like the after show is kind of taking the purpose of watch what happens live yeah. like it used to be i mean they still do it but like people from the show you just watched are the guests yes. on watch what happens live and you hear what they have to say in real time about what you just saw and i feel like the after show is like an even more detailed version of that yeah it's kind of wild because at a certain point this is only for like a cultural commentator standpoint but at a certain point it we're already probably there there is going to be too much content to consume to be able to have a productive <laughs> conversation about a show yeah. because there's just already if if carl and Lindsay and west already had their own podcasts plus yeah. the after show plus the season it's like how could you ever maintain all of the information in the world that we're supposed to have i know um I'm happy to have that much information, especially about Summer House. But um, yeah, I really hope that's a good sign that uh, they put more resources into Summer House. Yeah. To me, it felt like Bravo stamp of approval. They're kind of like, what the hell were we doing? We're leading up <laughs> to an explosive demise of a relationship between Carl and Lindsay. That, and it's a testament that the next episodes must be great and they want their feedback. So I'm so glad they did it. And I haven't checked, but like, I feel like Summer House is in the cultural conversation more, even though maybe the ratings, I don't know what the ratings are doing. Because remember, it was like dog shit ratings at yeah, first. Yeah, I know. We need to check back in on that. But it must be picking up. Because if so. they want to do an after show for it, it means like we're putting resources behind this. Right. Thing. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe, I wonder if the, I mean, it only, I, I assume it's worth it because then they get so much like social content out of those two. Like yeah. I feel like they clip those out. Yeah. Anyways. um, Yeah, this one was fun. I uh, thought this was one of their great parties. Yes. I, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about it. I was like, this is maybe the one party. I mean, I don't know if it's recency bias, but this was like <laughs> one I would want to be at so bad. Yeah. It looked so fun. Everyone came to play with their outfits. Yes. Like, I feel like it was, the parties used to always be like this. And more recently, I don't know why, but it this felt like old times, like the, the, tea party party and like all of the ones of the past that were so fun and themed yeah um this felt like that yeah everyone had a good like costume or outfit yeah. or whatever like everyone was so into it and it was a unique idea like a unique theme for a yeah. party i never seen anything like that like yeah. a little mini nascar <laughs> speedway vibe. yeah and then carl brought in like a real car and he was like driving it in the backyard and he, <laughs> he had a mustache he, he had a mustache West wore those lethal glasses. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, Craig was a mechanic. Oh yeah. He was covered in dirt and uh, oil. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was a um, very fun episode where the Carl and Lindsay relationship is a little bit on the back burner, but everyone is still in the sort of aftershock era of what they all witnessed. And really now they're like trying to have actually productive conversations with Carl and Lindsay independently about the state of the union between yeah. them and what's going to happen. And both, both Carl and Lindsay get like advice from different factions of the house. Like Lindsay yeah. has her now confidants. Yeah. Like Paige and Amanda kind of were like, yeah. wow, like Lindsay, we know what you're going through. Like I'm sympathetic to your side. Yeah. And then Carl has his, his boys right. telling him that like they're worried for him. Yeah. I feel like Paige was just trying to be nice. I feel like at her core, she's still like, you're the problem. But she really, really, she said it a lot. Yeah. Two different times. She was like, I almost felt like it was like lying in the sand, like I am declaring team Lindsay, even though I want to talk to you about if that, um, like, if that was earned. Paige wasn't there for the worst <laughs> of the worst. I think when she watches it back, she's be like, Oh my God. Yeah. And also I think they do allude to this on the after show. We're kind of going ahead, but they do allude on the after show that Lindsay talked more openly and sort of explicitly about the failures in Carl and Lindsay's sex life. Yeah. And so Amanda and Paige might have more information that we even got because from their initial conversation with Lindsay, I was like, I don't know, like you're rallying behind her just because you heard they have sex once every six weeks yeah. or whatever. But I think there's more that they heard. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, more to come. I did like uh, Paige's take on last week's episode that when Lindsay said that her and Carl have sex every two weeks, Paige w said what I always say, that everyone lies about the frequency. And so she did her, quote, girl math and calculated that two weeks meant six weeks. But I thought, I thought it was the opposite. 
I thought you and I always used to say back in the day that people on Bravo lie about doing or having sex with each other more. Well, yeah. So if they're only having sex every six weeks, she lies and says it's every two weeks. Oh, so Paige is <laughs> adhering to that. Math. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. So because fact- on average, people are like, uh, all the housewives are always like, my husband's a very virile man. We have sex yeah. three times a day. And it's like, no, you fucking don't. Yeah, we, we talked about it. Like when they'll go on a trip or whatever, they're all like, okay, yeah, me and my husband made love in the Uber on the way to the airport. And then we had sex in the airport bathroom right yeah. before we got to the... Okay, so you're saying... so, But then I didn't you think that Paige and Amanda also being so shocked... <laughs> By yeah, like that. they were like, lying too. Like I feel like Amanda didn't have any reaction to that because well, she's Amanda like, was like, "Don't compare me. We've been together ten years," and I was like, "That's right, baby." <laughs> I know. I, I I know Carl and Lindsay are. A, that's a unique situation. But the reason why Craig and Paige are making love so often is because they're sort of in a unique era. They're like, and they're long distance. Yeah, like they want to have sex with each other anytime they see each other. They have <laughs> bouts where they don't see each other, and they're. I would would say they're still in the honeymoon phase. Yeah. Well, Ka- uh, Carl and Lindsay technically should be in the honeymoon phase. They should They be haven't made- been together very long. They've been engaged less than a year. Yeah. Like, what's right. the problem? You're right. You're right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll parse that out a little more because that's the main <laughs> thing that Amanda and Paige use as evidence against the Lindsay and Carl dynamic on yes. Lindsay's side. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, nothing major happens right at the beginning. They're having that Southern cooking dinner that Sierra and uh, Lindsay did. They talk about Jesse's dating life. Apparently he's dating a ton. Yes. Um, and then Kyle makes a joke about um, Jesse hitting on Paige the first couple weeks a with jo- Craig at the table. A joke? A joke is... um. <laughs> well, not really a joke. <laughs> yeah. It was to me... Um, I, you know, I don't want to blame Kyle for this, but to me it was... Kyle is verging on being almost too producer brain. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, we say it a lot and yeah. it is very good. It is very essential for him to go like, what's you and West, you know, West and Sierra, what's the, what's going on there? Like in winter house, he was definitely the initiator for a lot of conversations. But sometimes I'm like, Kyle, did you, you just did this to bring up that conversation, yeah. you know, at the table. It's kind of like Tamra vibes. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> Kyle, I want to know that you're, I think he should rest, be rest assured that Summer House is very good right now and mm-hmm. it's ripping and we love Summer House. And if you just are true to yourself in every scene, we're still going to like it. And I don't think you need to propel the plot forward. That was my yeah. main takeaway from that. But what I loved is that the way Kyle put it, it was actually the most awkward thing in the world when he said it. And no one, it didn't turn out, it tur- didn't turn into a big blowout. Like, yeah. It turned, it was more like everyone was mad at Kyle for saying it. Like, I know. I didn't think it was that bad because uh, Craig wasn't mad. Like Craig and, uh, neither Craig or Jesse really gave a shit. So I don't get why anyone else would be so mad if the people that it was about weren't mad. Well, Jesse was, um... Jesse wasn't mad because he's a cool person who, yeah. like, he could have been legitimately very mad. Craig could have been legitimately mad. Like, no one knew. No one, Kyle didn't know how anyone would right. react. So his intentions were not good. And he right. tries to, like, double down and say why he said it. Right. But I did love that Craig was just like, uh, my girlfriend's pretty. Uh, I would hit on her, too. Yeah. And he was like, uh, you want a girlfriend that would get hit on by people. Like I, Craig's reaction was so awesome to me that like, cause they had been touting this big like rivalry that like, what's going to happen when Craig gets into the house? Is he going to beat up Jesse or is Jesse going to have to like, you know, whatever. But it's like, I loved it. It was like a very mature, normal way that Craig handled it. Yeah. And he was just like, he was like, yeah, I understand why Jesse did that. <laughs> yeah, he's and, like, I don't give a shit. But Amanda was furious. Yeah, she was really, really mad. She she says at some point, she says that I thought that he would just ruin the vibe for the whole weekend. He had no idea how Craig, you know, would handle that at all. Like it could have been a, you know, a blowout for the entire weekend. So he's yeah. like, so, but I liked that it was, I liked that this like curdling conflict that they thought was going to pop off ended up having the most like surprise ending that just like no one really cared craig didn't give a shit and jesse didn't even get that mad at kyle he's like dude he's like that was a little outrageous yeah but like he's still like nice about it which i thought was sweet no drama yeah um yeah and Paige was like i think amanda is low-key still pissed about kyle talking to me about her the other week um so amanda just seemingly wants kyle to shut 
the fuck up. Yeah, and then it the awkwardness after um, in that that scene, like um, it's so awkward that then Kyle and Amanda like have their own kind of awkward fight at the table where he's like, you're bound like a ball of yarn. He's like, you haven't even kissed me today. Like they have, they have a, a kind of a, I mean, not a Carl and Lindsay esque, but like there's a pretty bad fight in the house. Like yeah. if you were Craig coming into the house and you had heard that Carl and Lindsay were bad and then you witnessed that fight at the table, you yeah. might be like, wait, Kyle and Amanda are doing pretty bad right now. Right. You know, even though um, Carl and Lindsay are doing so bad that he just didn't even come on Friday because he was like, I would like to spend less time with you. <laughs> yeah. And in the after show, uh, I think I can bring it up now. Lindsay says that she did not know that that is why he was not coming on Friday. He told her that he was just going to go like visit someone and what he was bringing gifts or whatever and that's why he was coming so he did not make her aware of the friday night fight avoidance wow so she was like they were kind of making fun of him obviously in the in the after show she was saying like is that how you deal with your problems carl you avoid for a full night like so she was kind of you know like she was kind of mad at him uh-huh yeah well i would avoid too um <laughs> then they go out to the club and it's christmas in july themed so that was fun yeah and i, and I want to say like sometimes they don't film summer house out i don't know why because they want them to just like party and just capture it on iphone so it felt kind of rare and fun to see them with full camera yeah. production there at this bar right which kyle with his producer hat used as an opportunity to pull Lindsay aside since carl wasn't there um they sit at the bar together and kyle seems toasted um yeah. he orders a, a gin floater <laughs> on a on a on a lover boy, right? Is that what it was? Well, because I think every Hamptons bar that he was it, like, within yeah. a sixty mile radius, he has got convinced to have lover boy. So it's always an option when they go out. But I think like to make give an extra edge to right. lover boy, <laughs> gin on had, top. That was kind of fun. Yeah, and then Lindsay was like, "Whenever I drink gin, uh, whatever emotion I'm already feeling gets ten times better or worse. Like, uh, gin makes me go crazy, which I haven't." heard that about gin i usually hear that about like tequila i think gin is one of the yeah tequila for sure but i think gin is the one that's almost like the very divisive reaction mm -hmm. i think most people or a lot of people just absolutely can't stand gin uh -huh. and the people who love it i guess love it if it's yeah. in your alcohol repertoire sure do you have you have you had gin <laughs> i've discussed this before but i have made the switch from vodka to gin oh. regarding martinis um because vodka makes me feel sick I don't know why, um, but I don't think I shared this story before. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I went to that wonderful bar, the Dresden, in LA, and we ordered espresso martinis, and some people got vodka, and some of us got gin, because I am replacing with gin now, uh, and we got the bill, and the bartender had rung up, like the vodka one's normal, <laughs> the gin ones, it said, gin espresso barf teenies. They classified it as that on the receipt when yeah. it goes printed. They, in their system, in the POS system, they have it listed as a barf teeny. Or they typed it in manual just to be shady. So you don't think it's actually that they probably wrote that up themselves? A barf teeny? <laughs> I didn't see it till the next day. And I like looked I, like hazy eyed, like opened like the receipt from my purse. And I was like, what the hell? Did you, keep, did you keep it? I probably do have it. I have a picture of it for sure. That's very fun. Uh, I mean, kind of silly. Is that saying that this will make you sick? Or are they saying that is disgusting to order it like that? I think they're saying, no, both. <laughs> they're saying it's horrible What's to order What's wrong this? with that? I don't know. I would have People, never. Was it on Summer House or Vanderpump uh, or... I've seen multiple times on Bravo people ordering espresso martinis with tequila. Yeah. And that sounds disgusting. I don't know. I, I've only had like two espresso martinis in my life. So I haven't even had the option to ever change what's in them. <laughs> but I want to do, you know, I, someday when I'm in an espresso martini drunken era, I want to try all of them and see what the <laughs> difference is. Because it seems like the espresso would fully nullify yeah. any of the adverse taste of the liquor. Right. But I, I think <laughs> that should catch on. And if you want an espresso martini with gin at a restaurant, everyone should start it as a trend and say, I would like an espresso barf teeny and see if enough people in the industry know and give you that. Yeah, because I'm like, well, joke's on you because to me, a vodka martini is a barf teeny. So in your opinion, the joke was on them. <laughs> 
jokes on them. Uh, me tipped twenty five percent. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I loved everything about it, and I loved them. Uh, no, that's that's a very fun thing to learn. Um, so if you want to try your own espresso martini with gin, order it as a <laughs> espresso barf teeny and see what happens. I I really like that. I've never even heard of barf teenies in my life. I think it's that's not a great image, but um, so <laughs> Kyle, I th- I do think he's drunk. Yeah, I don't think he quite planned how to phrase what he wanted to tell her not very tactful no and he's basically saying carl he said as long as i've been i think engaged to amanda uh, carl has been telling me that he wants the same thing so he's saying carl has had a goal of getting married for many years now um and that it's something he wants so bad that he's willing to push through all of these red flags and problems because he wants this to work out. And you just watch Lindsay's face throughout. Like I, he keeps like kind of stumbling where you're like, are you sure you want to say it like that? Yeah. Like, and she says, she says like, please translate. She's like, what do you mean? Yeah. And she goes, what it sounds like you're saying is that he wants the marriage and he'll deal with anybody to get it. It's like, <laughs> She did translate what he was saying. Yeah. Like in his like drunken stupor or whatever. But it's like, why did he think that would be um, the best way to go about it? I think like you said, he knew having a conversation with Lindsay was pivotal and would be captured and, you know, it would be a good time to have that convo at this like Christmas in July bar. But you, he was too drunk to, to have a nuanced conversation. Yeah. So he just kind of led with what he was feeling and, um, yeah, it didn't resonate very well. Right. Um, but then she, as always takes a turn where she takes no accountability for the dynamic. Yeah. Um, she says that, um, he, that Carl judges her what, when she's drinking, if she's not perfectly happy, Um, She's like, if I drink and I'm happy, he doesn't care. But if I drink and I'm like have emotions and I'm not a perfect step, uh, Stepford wife, he can't handle it. And I'm like, well, yeah, because if you drink and you're happy, there's not a problem. But if every time you drink, you fly into a rage and accuse him of breaking his sobriety, that is a problem. So what are you talking about? Yeah, that was my reaction as well. It's like, yeah, he doesn't like. The horrible stuff you do when you're drinking and would definitely prefer if it wasn't like that. Yeah. And like she keeps admitting to retaliating, but she again and again, she's expressed this like four times to different people that she sees no problem with, um, yeah, like getting him back for making her feel judged and like, yeah, just literally retaliating which is not a healthy way of coping no uh, yeah no yeah she's like if you're gonna call me out for drinking i you're the one with the problem and i'm gonna call you out for other stuff you do meaning like weed or anger or whatever the hell (laughs) demons yeah she thinks uh he's wrestling with Yeah, that was gnarly when she was like i'm not the one that has a problem and i'm like well maybe read your instagram comments because everyone on earth thinks you do have a problem (laughs) Yeah, for yeah, for sure. And um yeah, and then Kyle kind of he says um so you do, you know, you do do that to to retaliate. And she goes, "Yes, I do." And then they sort of just end and they hug and it's like, <laughs> "Okay." And I feel like I feel like Kyle and Lindsay have sort of an underrated relationship where like Kyle can say anything to Lindsay. Like they've had horrible fights, yeah. but they just like respect each other in a way to where like they can do or say anything to each other, but it's like I don't know. It's like a neutral zone. It's like yeah. they can deal with anything. Like Kyle can talk shit about Lindsay, yeah. do anything. Like last season when he was like, I've never seen someone treat Danielle worse than you. And you just had that emotionless face when she was like crying to you yeah. or whatever. Like he just gets away with like yeah. saying that. I think Lindsay can bring it back to Kyle, but they're just like, they're okay with yeah. it. Yeah. Like uh, a couple weeks ago when he, she was like, I don't think I was irrational. When was I irrational? He's like, I would say you were acting highly irrational or yeah. wildly irrational. I was it, like, yes, King. Yeah, it's very, it's interesting. It's like, they, they I don't think they can hurt each other. They're like but, OGs. Yeah. Like, like they have to just, they know that they're pillars yeah. of the show. Yeah. When they do go walk away, Amanda's still a little mad at, at uh, Kyle, obviously. And when she goes away, she, she says uh, they should just marry each other to <laughs> Lindsay and Kyle. Nightmare. Um, and then later, Paige and Amanda discuss that they feel bad for Lindsay after that you know conversation about the sex life and everything. Um, and Paige was like, yeah, I want to ask her what she does like about the relationship because it kind of sounds like she's only talking about the bad. And she said, as always, 
Um, she needs a friend who will tell her that she doesn't have to go through with the marriage, which as we recall, she did for Amanda um, back in the day. And they were both like crying. Yeah. Uh, but obviously I, that marriage did go forward. Yeah. But I, that flashback was kind of jarring to me. I was like, I want to go back and watch. Yeah. Like, Paige was very worried about yeah. Kyle and Amanda. Yeah. Uh, I know. I remember at the time being like, it's a little much. I, I, I believe in their relationship more than uh, Carl and Lindsay. But I also think that Paige is so, I respect, I really like her point of view of like moving slow. And in this episode, it's all about how she wants financial independence and doesn't want to depend on a man. And like, obviously she really made Craig like roll the brakes and like, you know, not move forward super fast. So I like that she isn't like automatic, like marriage always, like no matter what, I like that. Um, But I also think like she is like scared of it so whenever other people are moving forward she's like are you sure yeah i think there is a little bit of that for sure yeah, yeah I, I agree with you on that which i i'm kind of like that too i'm like are you sure you want to do that like a lot of shit can go down like are you sure yeah uh do you want to talk about just west and sierra and their their beautiful love that is shining sure. through in every moment um <laughs> when they come back west is drunk and he goes into sierra's bed and he kind of just you know lays there with her and like they cuddle and they yeah. even cuddled early and Earlier in the episode, yeah. she's like, "You want to cuddle?" And they're they, in the cuddle zone. They're like cuddling. He falls asleep in her her bed. He, That's next to the friend zone. There's the friend zone, and then there's the cuddle zone, and then there's Bang Town. Wait, so, <laughs> wait, so you're saying there's friend zone, there's cuddle zone, <laughs> yeah, then there's Bang Town zone. Yeah. So they're sort of driving. They just <laughs> skip past the exit for. Well, they're on. Sorry, they skip past yeah. friend zone, right? I think it depends on, I think everyone has a different relationship to cuddle zone. And since Sierra is a bed bug, I think cuddle zone lives closer to friend zone. No, I, <laughs> I, I don't agree with you now. And I hate when we fight on turtle time. I hate when we fight. It's one of the worst things in the world. But I think Sierra and West are foot on the gas, pedal to the metal, blazing to bang town and bang, banging to relationship town i think when i like i have the after show to okay qualm me they don't they don't um or sorry to to as to use as evidence they don't explicitly say it but i think the way wes is talking about sierra this is still an ongoing relationship okay. i think i do like that they brought up all the austin stuff and are putting this relationship in context through that one and that like he's learning about that for I'm going to say in quotes for the first time because I assume he probably watched uh, the show. I actually give I give him the benefit of the doubt. I really think he might have gone into this cold, okay, not knowing anything. He he, the way I'm a, co- a good pretty good judge of actory uh, stuff. And when he when Kyle brings up the Austin stuff, I kind of felt like he didn't know about it or yeah. didn't know that much about Austin. Yeah, but they basically lay it out that like Sierra was like, I was so humiliated by that austin situation that like i'm not gonna let that happen again so that's probably a big part of why she's like i will take this one step at a time and uh kyle says that yeah she's hard to lock down she takes it slow yeah uh she does say a good thing you know around this era just if we're talking about the whole sierra and west and austin dynamic she does say that's like this was sort of like a mistake blip Mm -hmm. in my life like where i just like dated a guy and he like kind of like broke my heart or messed with me but like in the reality tv universe that thing is like a part of your biography forever yeah like it's one of the only three things that some people will bring up about her even though in her grand scheme of things that is like nothing to her yeah a guy treated her like shit yeah so it's like she's she she's kind of almost talking about the public opinion of her too and she will never let something like that happen again on camera which makes me totally understand why this west dynamic is so important to her taking it slow and really thinking about it they also reminded us of the the horrors of uh, Lindsay Hubbard and Austin uh, that summer where <sighs> she just like was like, I know that you're, um, you know, have been in a very sort of hot and heavy relationship with Austin and he's fucking with you, but I'm going to make out with him in front of everyone and not apologize. To, I like this is so this is mean. This is mean <laughs> as I get down and dirty stinker minute. But seeing Austin in those scenes, those flashbacks, and now comparing him with, like, West for Sierra, (laughs) I'm almost like, get the hell away from Sierra. Like, I know you're going to be a nightmare to her. I'm like, what the fuck was everyone thinking with this Austin era? And it's still going on. I mean, he's basically just, like, fighting through people that want to date him or whatever. But I was just like, damn, it was kind of a jump scare. 
Like, yeah. get away from him. Yeah. And then, yeah, I remember Lindsay was like, that's just the relationship that me and Austin have. We, like, make out sometimes and, like, we're really good friends. And she was just like, deal with it, bitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was bad. And that's that's what uh, Sierra's taking into account. And, and if we're talking... then Sierra's like, Carl, your girlfriend reminds me of my belligerent alcoholic dad. You should really break up with her because your kids are going to be traumatized. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you're going to get payback for uh, making out with Austin at that pool party. Um, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I guess we can go on to the race party, yeah? Yeah, well, there was one moment leading up that I did want to talk about, which was Craig and Sierra's dynamic, which I loved seeing. I just love that um, – I love Craig – or, sorry, I love Sierra and Paige's friendship. I love Sierra and Craig's friendship, you know, like it's like Paige's best friend or whatever. And I do like when Craig said to Sierra, he was like, um, you know, I, I – he was like, I was kind of – taken aback to see you in this mode love mode with yeah. west or whatever he was like i didn't know that you were attracted to those that, like a goober type he said <laughs> and then he goes but actually honestly you fit and he was like I, you know and i wanted to tell you that like i'm sorry about the austin era he's like i would have warned you if i would have known you better that austin was going to do something like that yeah so that was like you know interesting to say that about your friend austin that like if you would have known sierra better he would have yeah. like stopped her from this well you but know that's always craig's crusade that is like his guy friends are dirt bags but then i have to say now the after show part Paige and sierra were laughing at craig for that because they said that's absolutely not true and that <laughs> craig was championing this relationship and really wanted austin and sierra to work out mm. so he was just totally doing hindsight as 2020 like if i would have been there i would have stopped things but sure. they say that's not true makes sense yeah um okay so the race party looks awesome. Everyone's outfits are awesome. Um, Sierra did the uh, wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Yes. Another iconic costume <laughs> uh, for Sierra. It was so fun. And everyone looks awesome. Like we said, everyone looks so cool. Kyle looks cool as hell. <laughs> yeah. Evil Knievel. Yeah. Um, and, and all of the like random stuff at the party is so cool like the track yeah inflatable track everybody's kind of stunned at one point amanda and Paige are like setting up like a go-kart or something yeah the, you know what i mean yeah like, there's it, so much cool shit at it this looks party. great um yeah and then amanda and Paige are talking about like i already mentioned um uh, Paige talking about wanting financial independence um they compare it to uh kyle and amanda but amanda says when i got together with kyle he had put every cent of his into lover boy so it's not like he held the cards money wise because he was taking a big risk and that she like he convinced her to quit her regular job to work full time at lover boy and she reveals that lemon cello was her idea and it's the biggest hit and uh page says that he doesn't give her enough credit in general for her sacrifice for yeah. lover boy kyle doesn't ever she says kyle doesn't ever reference that like uh that amanda was sort of the support system during the early days of lover boy and doesn't give her credit for limoncello <laughs> but we did see that kyle gave credit to amanda about her awesome design on the spritz so yes. he does i guess few and far between but i think he maybe underestimates amanda's impact on lover boy yeah so words of affirmation there kyle yeah you need to tell amanda <laughs> how powerful she is and how um, special she is to Loverboy. Yes. But I also am getting sort of uh, the sense that an undercurrent of this season is that Amanda might want to leave Loverboy yeah. or that Kyle won't say it, but he thinks that business and home life or whatever relationship shit is too interconnected. But mm -hmm. it's something that neither of them are willing to say because then Amanda says, we went all in on lover boy or we made this decision we needed to do it at the time but maybe it was the wrong decision yeah so they might be setting up amanda like amanda should still be the ambassador of lover boy obviously she would promote it just as much yeah but just maybe she shouldn't work with kyle full time yeah for sure um okay then they are playing that fun they're racing on these little bikes or whatever yeah um and <laughs> kyle jokingly sort of knocks over west but then his flame sunglasses stab him across the bridge of his nose in a pretty like deep gash and there's just blood pouring down his face okay i'll say you said jokingly twice with things that kyle did <laughs> uh, these are up there with you two thought of it the... was like a violent act i mean it was no i mean no 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 i don't think kyle 
I don't think Kyle obviously wanted that to happen, <laughs> but it was not right. Not cool. Not cool. I mean, I love I love Kyle. I, t- I sing his praises every single episode, but to do the Jesse thing at the table, which was re- received very awkwardly, and I felt like it was a little producer brained, for then West to be like already winning in a hard won <laughs> race against everyone, all of the other cast members to be at the the front of the race, and then when Kyle goes up to him with this like shit eating grin to, to <laughs> push him, West goes don't 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 like he's already winning, and then the way Kyle pushes him, it's really hard and aggressive, and it's right on the corner corner of the mm. thing it wasn't just a push for him to win it yeah. was a diagonal push <laughs> aggressive push i'm like i'm not that kind of shit i do not like yeah I, I don't like that and it was it it was exactly what you would think would happen when you push someone into a big inflatable <laughs> thing it's dangerous you flop over to hit the the glasses that he's wearing are like plastic or hard yeah. plastic or something they cut into his nose and that's like i mean no offense, Kyle. But that's like a permanent scar on his yeah. nose from you just doing this sort of, I'm not going to say bully energy, but just like, <laughs> I don't know, it wasn't the right energy he for that. Up. And also, it may, it's the way West is as a person, such a sweet, you know, like, like person that it just, that energy mixed with him. I hated seeing him get hurt. Yeah. And you having to have the bloody nose and everyone has to run over you. It's like, it's embarrassing. Yeah. And I just felt like Kyle read the room wrong yeah and he read the room wrong at the table yeah and i think it's just it's a it's a it's him it's him playing for the camera in ways that i hope are not authentic to himself and i just it just had the worst result yeah it was like yeah low-key ruined west's day he took it in stride but he had to just like sit around with a huge band-aid on his nose after that and he clearly they tried not to show that it, he was getting helped by a medic yeah but like it was obviously a medic and then <laughs> uh, yeah it, it was it's like a game over thing i mean it's like the fact that he even tried to have fun after and like smoke a cigar while his nose is like gashed and bleeding <laughs> and he might have to like you know it's like it was a big deal and it was really good it's a nice uh move though to get some love in from sierra though yeah it's really it was it yeah but i also was like amanda's reaction to at the table to kyle spilling the beans or like outing jesse as a flirter with Paige. i was like where is amanda's reaction to this he did the he had the exact same impulse when he pushed west yeah but and he bled worse this is much worse yeah Yeah, i'd be horrified if i were her actually yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it's like it's like of all things to get mad at. If even if anybody did it, even if you weren't mad at Kyle and you had a relationship, if your significant other pushed someone in a sort of not fun <laughs> way and then they got really hurt, anybody would be mad at their significant other. Yeah. So I felt like, what was Amanda's reaction? Did she truly know that Kyle pushed West and right. like, caused this bleeding emergency? <laughs> um, also, yeah. Sierra was sort of undercutting how bad it was. She was going, yeah, she didn't care. She was like, your little <laughs> cut. She was like, uh, I know, because I was like. They, like, as they mentioned, she's a nurse. So, like, and she was like, they were like, Sierra, give him stitches. And she's like, nurses can't provide stitches. I was like, all right. It was worse. Give him a little kiss. Yeah, it, it was worse than they, and they don't want to have an accident on camera. They, they do not want to belabor that. Like, I'm surprised people don't get hurt way more in these escapades. I always talk about this and I, I don't even barely want to say it, but Ken, I said, oh, maybe stop. I, said I was literally just thinking of that. The worst injury i've ever seen on camera i think is the most despicable it? action it's one of their friends who we said was killed right after you'll never know who it was someone at ken's beautiful 60th party or 65th birthday pushes him as hard as he can into his pool onto a shallow they didn't realize that end. the beautiful villa rosa pool has a gradual walk-in which we know that's the so route if you we ta- fall within the first five feet it's Complete, it's like ankle deep. So Ken slips and hits his hip that he had just had replaced with his Ugh. hip. And it's like... It's scary to watch. He, I'm traumatized by that. And he has that. to grin and bear it and pretend to be fun. It's just awful when that happens. It's like, fun, that is just not fun. And I felt bad for West, but whatever. Yeah. He got over it. He took it in stride. He did good. Yeah. Um, I just, I didn't, I, I don't know if you want to get into the Paige and Craig thing. Because I feel like it just went well. Like they just were kind of on it's, the same page. It's I yeah yeah no pun intended. It's um what I say every week now. It's like you guys are doing so good and you love each other so much that like you even you trying to make little things entice us into some conflict. I'm just like I'm not buying it. You yeah. guys are killing it. It's, yeah, this is love. You're working it out. You're rich. You live in two different <laughs> places, two sought after places like a vacation spot and a. But hustle and bustle like yeah. environment like it is just the perfect scenario <laughs> did Nothing- you like that um when Lindsay was like is uh would you uh give money to Paige like 
would you chip in on the rent or whatever? And Paige is like, I don't want him to like, yeah. no. And he's like, oh, I, I told her that if, you know, she found a really sick place that was more than she could afford, I could take the, take it off the top and like, yeah. you know, p- pitch in or whatever. And then Paige is like, what am I going to do if we break up? Be like, your rent is due. And I was like, Ugh. Lindsay's like 13,000 is due every month. We sign the lease. <laughs> pay, we the, t- pay the piper. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like sort of absent of Lindsay. I was so glad to get a little glimpse of Lindsay in there. Um, yeah, yeah, you're you're exactly right. It's like that is Lindsay's future. It's like, like Carlito Venmo. I'm, not, I'm just trying to do your impression. That was not me doing Lindsay. She's it's like, like can it frog. <laughs> um, so uh, I just want to say to end the chapter on Paige and Craig, <laughs> they are doing so good that when they look at each other's eyes, they're like. Do you know how much I love you? They're like, I love you more than anyone in the world. How much do you love me? A lot. They're like, do you want to fuck right now? I'll fuck you. Like, like I know. Every go- time it cuts to them, they're like, love you. They're, they're just like, they're like, come on. I'm so horny right now. Like, it's like, there is just nothing stopping. They're like the, like the sun of a relationship. I almost can't watch because it's yeah. too powerful and beautiful. And they honestly don't seem, I mean, obviously Craig is realistic about that. Eventually there will be a limit to how often to how long they can be long distance for yeah. but like it doesn't really seem to bother them right no, now. no it doesn't like, and and no one should i they, i think they want to make it known because they want there to be some interesting dynamic to their relationship obviously but like i just they're yeah i guess they're just they're doing good and they don't have to let us into this world if they it's don't a want two to our flight yeah it's fine whatever yeah um okay this is the big thing of the end it's amanda page and Lindsay talking about the relationship and then carl and all the guys talking about his yes. relationship yep. um amanda and page are basically setting up like you said like an allyship they go Lindsay. it's kind of awkward and like forced but because they know that she's so defensive that they feel like they have to be so kit gloves but they're like thanks for being so vulnerable the other night like talking about your sex life and all of that like you know i feel like that's hasn't been the case with you like we haven't really been able to talk details and Lindsay says that last summer she was so uncomfortable because she felt so judged um because everyone was freaked out by their relationship because it was fucking weird (laughs) yeah yeah and also just um Paige goes thanks for talking about such intense stuff with us last night and Lindsay's like what did I tell you that was intense? And they go, that you guys never have sex. Yeah, she's she like, looked oh. offended. Yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, I did say that. Um, so why do you think, yeah, so, and then they said, like, I am, Paige just said, like, I, she said, like, uh, I am Team Lindsay in mm-hmm. this scenario. When they, you have fights, everyone says, oh, poor Carl, oh, poor Carl. Yeah. But nobody thinks about you. So, like, why do you think for- Did you see the, like, grin she looked like yeah. the like Jack Nicholson in The Departed, where she's like, "Yes." Oh yeah, it, I actually, you know, I have to watch that again. <laughs> I, I didn't see her full blown grin at them becoming allies, but I'm sure it meant a lot to her because mm-hmm. she's always valued Paige and uh, Amanda and wanted to be a part of that group. She's just done so much horrible shit to them that they never really let her in the bed bug <laughs> community. Yeah, but this felt like an olive branch to get Lindsay in. But I don't under I don't know. I mean, did we we already did we already say that just Paige and Amanda both sort of missed the most like chaotic events of Carl and Lindsay's dynamic? So they're it's easier to be on Lindsay's side because they don't have the full story now. Right. right. No. I, yeah. I don't really get their angle except that maybe they just truly don't want her to feel like shit on and like without um, an ear. Yeah. Um, also, Gabby wasn't there that weekend, so she didn't have a an ally but um yeah i i don't know and then Lindsay's like i feel like he thought i was gonna change once we were together and then i mean it was kind of a dig amanda in her interview is like uh i think carl thought that um once they were committed to each other that she would treat him with respect (laughs) yeah and that and that um if if she did get activated carl wouldn't get the brunt of the full Lindsay activation and then in the after show they talk about that with Danielle and Dan- Danielle says uh that's exactly how I felt last year when Lindsay was yelling at me 
she was treating me like trash, like someone who hadn't been her good friend. She was treating me like how she treats all of her enemies. Mm. So she's been a recipient of that too. So when Lindsay got activated, she gave her the full power of her wrath and ignored that she was a friend. Uh-huh. And that's how Carl feels too. Like, Did why don't I get Danielle spe- acknowledge that she felt bad that Carl was treated that way? Was that the angle? What was she? Danielle did not say that she has any sympathy towards either side, but she just let it be known, which, and also Lindsay and Danielle were not sitting Mm. uh, together in the same after show. You know how they separate them. So I, I don't know. It's very possible still the theory that Danielle is just learning in real time what, you know, (laughs) what happened, the horrors of Lindsay and Carl. So Um, I don't know. And then, so on this side, um, Lindsay's, like taking these allies and saying like, yeah, I get no respect in this house. Everyone takes Carl's side or whatever. Then in the other conversation, Carl's like, sounds like I need to go to anger management. Like I'm willing to do that. And all the guys are like, huh? Jesse, <laughs> Jesse says very um, cautiously, but, and, and just with like, you know, curiosity, he goes, he's like, do you think you're an angry guy? Because you don't seem that angry to me. Yeah. And Kyle's like, just make sure that you're not completely giving in on all these concessions because that'll lead to resentment, which is like a killer. Um, And he said, like they're talking about if the wedding is too soon, given the complications that have been going on. And Carl said that one of their during one of their big fights, he mentioned moving the wedding a few months to January and that Lindsay like freaked the fuck out and was like, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, Lindsay's like, they're telling her, you know, they're like, do you feel like maybe you guys got together too soon or like, you know, whatever. And Lindsay's like, I feel like there are miniature red flags, but not red enough to be a deal breaker. And the episode ends with Paige being like, just need to let you know you if you don't feel confident you don't have to do it it's easier to break up than to get divorced yeah yeah and i wanted to give uh you know uh a shout out to jesse because he he did a really good job of like kyle and craig were sort of giving very ambiguous like statements about about carl they were kind of like ah, have you ever considered possibly you know maybe pushing or whatever but then jesse just said it he was like I know I shouldn't give advice and I'm just coming as an outside observer, but what we're all saying is, do you think it's too soon for you to get married when you're having these complications? So he put it to him very bluntly, yeah. but well, that's, it's great because he doesn't have the history yes. with either of them. So he can just see it completely clearly that like what I'm seeing is not good. Like yeah. I don't care what the background is or how you met how long you've been together or whatever all i'm seeing is that every weekend you guys are tearing each other's heads off yeah and what's that called like an outsider perspective yeah like sometimes that's just so valuable like yeah jesse's just new to this like dynamic it's very clear to him and he's shocked so they're both getting the same feedback yeah on either end <laughs> right yeah basically everyone in the entire house is like oh no but i think Lindsay is obviously not taking it to heart and saying, I'm ready to race through to the finish line. And Carl is the one really taking what Jesse, Kyle, and Craig are saying to heart. And he's thinking about it, obviously, much right. more than Lindsay because he ultimately makes the decision. So we now have evidence that he at least once asked to postpone the wedding, which would lend itself to uh, the anti-blindside campaign. Right. So start your engines is really a double <laughs> entendre, meaning maybe possibly start your engines toward the demise of <laughs> Carl and Lindsay's relationship, as yes. well as being a sort of car metaphor. Yes. Um, I want to say oh. Kyle was very outspoken in the after show and said, um, he says he watches Lindsay interviews now in this current era. And he says, I am absolutely shocked because it seems like we never even filmed the show because she sounds like she doesn't know anything that <laughs> happened. He said, you are going to look like an idiot saying that this was a blind side. Yes. So I can't wait. I need to watch that immediately. Yeah. So it was um, good. Uh, everyone should watch the Summer House after show. And if you're not watching Summer House, I don't know what the hell you just listened to, but Summer House is ripping. It is so good. And even an episode where there's not a lot of conflict, like Carl and Lindsay having the worst fights you've ever seen, it's just so fun. And yeah. all of the cast members are like fun, funny, cool and they're all having the best time and they're yes. partying like it's like i there's no like it's not about conflict this show even though there is a lot of conflict sometimes even when they're all just like loving each other and having fun like they were at camping it's just fun to watch you don't totally. always have to have yeah 
Yeah. I couldn't recommend it more. Good. All right. Well, we're done. We're going to open all of our <laughs> Vanderpump Villa stuff. I'm going to put on the lotion, the perfume. I'm going to take a bath. And um, then we're we're done. This is a special Summer House episode. I hope you all liked it. We're going to get it up today. Good Friday. All right. Okay. We love you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.